Hi, in this video, we are going to discuss about random module. Now the question is, what is a module? So whenever you have a very big project to design, then we are going to uh, separate them or split or uh, divide the entire project into various modules and different teams will work on different modules, creating different modules. Instead of creating one single file, you will be getting different files. So in order to understand it in simple words, you can think of a module as a different file. Okay. Now, when you have a module as a file, then in order to use the code that you have written in that file in your program, you have to use import. So if once you import something, then you can actually uh, run the program and you can actually use it. Whatever you have imported, you can actually use the code inside your program. It is very difficult for me to explain you by words. Let us see a program. So we have main.py is our uh, so every function, every project is supposed to have that is a convention, a main.py. And now apart from that main.py, go to the project and you create a new file, which is a Python file. And you generate you, you, you create any file like that. So my module is what we are using. So now you can see that my module.file is created. Now inside my module.file, you can write the code which you can import it in the main.py. Okay. So for example, here I am writing pi equal to 3.1415. So it is a simply a constant which is the value of pi. So I am just writing the pi value. And now I will go to main.py and I import that pi. Okay, this pi is confusing, I guess. P by pi is Python. P by pi is uh, the constant pi, mathematical constant pi. Okay, so now I am importing my module and I am just printing my module dot pi. So which is so this pi is present inside my module file. I am simply writing my module dot pi, and if I try to print it, you can see that. 3.1415 is printed, which is actually the value of pi that we have entered in my module. So this is how modules work. You can import any module. So there are Python already comes with built-in modules. And sometimes you might have to import third module, uh, third party modules. You can do that by installing them. So random is already installed. When you install Python, random module is already installed. Let's import it. Let's import random. Now the question is, what are the functions available in random? So you, anyone has to understand how to read what are the functions or what are the constants available within a module. For this, there is Python docs. Okay, let's go to that website, Python docs. So the website is docs.python.org. If you go to that website and whatever module you want to read about, you can read about it there. So it is a random, pseudo random number generator. Random is a pseudo random number generator. So what is pseudo random number generator is? It is truly not random, but it is close to random. Now, random has been, so the random has uh, implemented an algorithm. If you are curious to know about how random package works or how random module is implemented, then there is a Wikipedia page about pseudo random generator that is used in Python. You can go through it. It is not very easy. It is full of mathematics and it is complex. So you might not be able to understand it or completely understand it. But still, if you are curious, you can have a look at it. But for Python language, it is not required. It is not a mathematical class. So it is out of the scope for this course. But if you are interested, you can read about it. Okay. So now if you observe it, so there are various functions. One function is randint, random dot randint a comma b. So if you write random dot randint a comma b, it is going to give you a random generator within the range of a comma b, both a and b inclusive, which means your random number generator can give a and b also, and also any random number within it. Now let's write a program and see that. So I have imported random. Unless you use it, the highlight is not going to happen. See, it is in the bell lines. Now, when you are using it, 
highlight is happening right random underscore integer so i am writing rand in random dot rand in and let us say i i put a number 1 comma 10 which means i want a random number from 1 to 10 between 1 to 10 including 1 and 10 if you run it let's print it so if you run it you can see that randomly some number is generated every time it may be the same number also but it is generated randomly and pseudo random so see that 5 8 they are changing 4 every time when i run it they are changing sometimes they may not change but it is random number now similarly if you want a floating point random number you can do that so you can say random underscore float so the function that you are going to use for float is random <coughs> so this function is going to return to you a floating point number between 0 and 1 1 exclusive which means you will not get 1 so you will get from 0 0.0002 to 0 0.9999 within that range whatever number some number you are going to get using floating point so if you see if you run it and see see some random number is given some floating point number is given okay run it again again it has changed some 3 by so on okay so now if you observe it this random is not going to take any range it is only giving you between 0 and 1 but what if you want a random floating point number from 0 to 5 so you just think about it pause the video think about it how we can convert 0 to 1 range to 0 to 5 okay so it is simply by multiplying it with 5 if I multiply with 5 then I am going to get a range from 0 0.000 to 4.9999 within that range I am going to get it see that now I got 2.9 something which is between 0 and 5 now I got 4.8 something which is again between 0 and 5 got it now earlier we have done the log calculator right so the percentage of you know uh, the log calculator has given you a number with percentages of match now earlier there was no randomness in it always you are going to get the same thing if you want to include randomness you can actually uh, use a random number there also okay for example i can say print uh, uh, log log score equal to random integer between 1 and 100 and I can directly print it in a string I am doing that earlier we have seen this uh, program I am just trying to modify it a bit now every time when you run it it will be different so which means there is no real answer here it is all your luck okay so this is about log calculator which is giving you some random number or oh, it, it has given your log score is 100 so amazing okay now it is giving 89 so like that numbers will keep changing so introducing randomness in python programs is very important especially when it comes to gaming you cannot have a static flow because users will learn about that flow and they will always win thank you now let's use your knowledge that we have learned so far about random and let's try to do a small program a simple program to find out whether a coin toss is a head or tails okay randomly we have to generate it <clears throat> so how can we do it just pause the video and do it on your own using random module now we will see it okay so i have imported random now from random int random i have used random int and i am using only two numbers 0 and 1 when i write 0 comma 1 in random int it is going to produce only two numbers either 0 or 1 so i am going to use 1 as heads and 0 as tails simple that's it that's the end of the program 
let's see that. So I'm generating a random number and if that random number is one, then I'm going to say uh, print it is heads. Else, which means if it is zero, then I'm going to say it is tails. Just run, run it and see how it will execute. So initially we got tails. Run it again. Again we got tails. Now we got heads. Now run it again. Again we got tails. Run it again. We got heads. So like that we can generate any random number and you can use it in the games. So this is a simple coin toss, coin tossing game where you are going to get head or tails. So don't worry, programs are going to become complex. We are just starting the show. So as we progress in this course, we are going to see very complex programs. And now let's go very slowly, but it is almost over. We are getting into complex programs, okay? Thank you.